Good evening, everybody. Welcome to the Pits of Motorcast. This is your host, Dave. And I got on the line uh, a guy that eats, sleeps, and breathes nitro methane, Jerry Newman. Hey, Jerry. Hey, good evening, Dave. How are you tonight? Oh, I'm fantastic. So, tell, tell us, Jerry, how did it all begin for you years ago? Well, I started hanging out at uh, Great Lakes Dragway in Union Grove, Wisconsin, and uh, well, with my own car in 1961, 55 Chevy. And uh, the next year, I got connected with uh, some guys with a twin-engine gas dragster. And in 63, I got uh, hooked up with two guys uh, with a nitro fuel dragster. And that's when I started mixing my first nitro and went on from there. I had my own cars in 68 through 78. And uh, then in uh, 83, I got involved uh, with Doc Holliday. I was living in Minnesota, and I had been friends with Doc for years. And he asked me about tuning his car, and I started tuning his funny car. Before that, I was all involved with dragsters. And uh, we went on to do pretty good with that thing. And now, uh, starting in 2008, I came back uh, again with Doc and some other people, and uh, Nostalgia Funny Cars have come to be. So now I'm quite busy in that. So that's a, kind of in a nutshell. So who, who are you working with, with, with besides Doc? I know Baz, Baz Young. Yeah, Anthony Bronji. I've got uh, a car called the Boss, Boss Bird. It's the only real Pontiac Nitro funny car in the world. Uh, we've been running that. And I've been helping now Bobby Hilton with his uh, big block Chevy uh, field, or Nitro Fuel Dragster. Uh, got a guy out in uh, uh, New Mexico, Ray Stringer, that we uh, turned in. He was an alcohol guy and turned him into Nitro last year and working with him going. And then I got some cars in uh, the other parts of the world, uh, England, and one in uh, Sweden, and a couple in uh, Australia, and uh, oh, a few guys with some fuel alters, and I don't know, a few cars around. Yeah, I did an interview with uh, Rocky Perone last night at the Ford Frantic Board. Yeah. He was, he was telling me you helped him before. Yeah, we uh, we had quite a bit of success with him. I'm quite happy. He wanted to. Uh, he asked me to build him a uh, burnout combination where he could burn out for a thousand feet with a nitro car, back up and make a eighth mile run, and not have to take the engine apart. So we worked on it and got it pretty well perfected. He's uh, he's done some genuine thousand foot burnouts with it, so it, that's been quite impressive. Yeah. Yeah, he was telling me last night. He wished you lived closer. <laughs> well, yeah, that's the problem, but, oh, well, we get together once in a while, and there's always the Internet and telephone, so it's pretty easy nowadays compared to years ago. Yeah, you got to love Rocky, how he's trying to bring back the long, smoky burnouts and the dry hops. Oh, yeah. Oh, he does a, he does a good job, and, and we put the, uh, the engine combination, the whole car combination together just to do that. That's how it was planned, and... Uh, yeah, it uh, it's worked out really nice. I'm really impressed with that thing. Now, do you do you think they'll actually bring that back into the nostalgic funny cars again? The long burnouts and the drab? <laughs> well, not not really. Um, the way we run the clutches nowadays, um, it's it's much more demanding than in the old days, um, and so it's hard to do. The, the long burnouts are okay. Other than that you got to be a little bit hard on the motor because the tires don't smoke nearly as much as they did years ago. And then with the track prep is so much better. Um, you, you got to actually run the cars hard to do a burnout, which is not that good. Um, Rocky, with his car, he wanted it designed just specifically for burnouts and dry hops. And so that's what we did put the combination together and even with some gear ratio things and stuff we've we'll done but uh current nostalgia funny cars yeah you could do some dry hops but what it does is it opens up the uh air gap in the clutch and that that affects your tune-up so you have to almost have a combination tune-up put together for doing dry hops uh with the clutch 
So that's why you don't see it anymore. Uh, also, you see in the, even in the big show now, you've got the guys pushing the cars into the water box uh, and pushing them up the stage because they don't want to get any heat into the clutch until they run. Yeah. So it's, it's all about the clutch. Yeah, when when I was a kid, probably four or five, my dad started taking me to drag racing with, with the Great Lakes Dragway and the US-30, and I, you see all the smoky burnouts and the dry hop and all that. Thing. Yeah, it's it's spectacular. There's no doubt about it. Yeah. Uh, it's kind of going with the the fuel alters now, or uh, the, the big pump combination fuel alters of Tom Moultrie and other people. They're uh, they're bringing it back because they've got a combination that isn't so dependable on or dependent on performance, mm -hmm. and so they can work a little bit more on the show. Um, but uh, yeah, that's where drag racing is today. I think the biggest thing is the track prep. The tracks are so much unbelievably better than they were even, let's say, in the 80s that, uh, you know, it, it wants to tear the tires off the car. So you've got to get some real wheel speed going to, to do a big burnout. Yeah, and Rocky also said he wants to have the big header flames all the time. Yeah, yeah, we worked on that. Uh, I uh, designed a camshaft for that that's uh, all about uh, exhaust and, and making some flames. And, and it's also a little bit more bottom-end horsepower, so it's a little bit easier for him to, to do the big, long burnouts. Yeah, when I was a kid, it was Jungle Jim and everybody, the Snake and Mongoose, TV Tommy Ivo, all them guys. Like, eh. Shite Down Hustler. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that, that was a year, but unfortunately it's kind of gone now. Yeah. So, a little bit yet with the nostalgia cars, but uh, not many of them either. Yeah, Jungle Jim was always fun to watch back in the day. Yeah. Oh, yeah, he was a showman, that's for sure. It would be interesting to see what his career would have went on to with, with uh, his talents, but unfortunately it all ended. Another car I used to like watching was uh, Roland Leon Hawaiian. Oh yeah, sure. Yeah. Color, yeah. Me, color me gone. Yeah. And so, so you you just were with uh, Bob's over the weekend. How'd you how'd you guys do up there? Well, we did pretty good. We were at uh, Cordova on Saturday night, two runs, and uh, the track was a little little tough. Uh, they didn't have a lot of cars there. It was a little slippery out about 200 feet, so we had trouble spinning the tires both runs. But uh, got down through there, I forget what it ran, 411 or something like that in the eighth, and then he was shutting it off. Uh, it was skating around pretty bad at 1,000 foot. We uh, Six o'clock at night wasn't too bad, but we ran the second run at 10, 10, 15 at night, and the dew had started to come in, and it was getting pretty slippery. But uh, we got it down through there, and Ready to run again. We're going to Cedar Falls, Iowa on Friday. Got uh, got a DRO race over there. No, the, I know the the other car you uh, Boz went against that one didn't run too good either. I heard. Uh, Raji, yeah, we had trouble in burning intake valves. It ran good the first lap, but uh, ran a four hundred three to the eight, which was real nice. But uh, burned an intake valve and backfired the blower. But uh, yeah. other than that, did he'll be at uh, Cedar Falls. Yeah, once the weather starts getting cool and the dew, dew starts getting on the car, that's not good. Yeah. Oh, track gets pretty slippery, especially at Cordova because you're across the road from the Mississippi River, so there's plenty of moisture there to do that. And we, we normally, we run there quite a bit. You're okay normally till about 9.30 at night, but yeah. boy, you start getting at 10 o'clock, it gets pretty yeah. tricky. Cause I know the Chicago Wise guys didn't do their final, final two guys, like, probably because of that. That's correct. Yeah, it, it got it, it got plenty slippery. Yeah. So, so what what do you think about pro mods, Jerry? Well, I nothing exciting for me. I mean, they're they're still alcohol cars. Uh, I, I'm all about nitro. It's either nitro or nothing. So, uh, you know, that's that's all that's ever really interested mm -hmm. me. Uh, I think the, the pro mods are great for the show that they put on. 
and also their dependability. I think uh, that's why they're doing so well at NHRA and having 30 some cars show up and pro stockers can only get about 10. So I, I think they're ultimately, they have been replacing the pro stocks and I think they, they will continue to do that. Yeah, yeah they're, they're getting faster and faster too. They're almost up to with the funny cars now. Yeah, yeah, well, they allow them, you know, to run screw blowers and that, that makes a pretty big difference. And you can make a lot of horsepower with a screw blower. So uh, that's, that's get, picked them up about 20 miles an hour when they allow them to do that. Man. So, so what, what do you think about the Chicago Wise guys? Oh, they put on a great show. They're a good group. We run with them quite a bit at uh, Union Grove and now in, this last week at Cordova. And, no, they're very well organized and put on a nice show. They've got uh, a good handout for sure of all their cars. And uh, I, I think they're a great outfit, you know. Yeah, Pete, Pete Demo has been doing it for 20, 23 years this year, I believe. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 So, so what what got you into drag racing way back when? Oh, just the interest in cars. I uh, started out... Uh, well, driving when I was 12 years old and uh, worked on a farm in the summertime and so somewhat mechanical, but just had an interest in the cars right away. And as I got my driver's license one month after I was 16 and had my own 55 Chevy already. And of course, uh, might have might have did a little street racing or something. I don't know. It could be a rumor. But uh, so naturally it was to go down to Great Lakes Dragway and Started spending every weekend there for a lot of years. Now, who who else have you worked with in the past? Well, I took the, my own cars, and then of course, uh, with uh, Doc was the most success in the in the eighties. We ran real strong then, and we ran over thirty dates a year between IHRA and NHRA, and we won uh, AHRA. Funny car championship and I think it was 86 that was against guys like McEwen and Perdome and uh, well Force had just come out then and Hoover and so we ran real good there but uh, yeah other than that it's just been a lot of people throughout the years I don't know I think it's I think it's over 30 cars that I've tuned 30 different drivers so uh, quite a few I remember when I was talking to you at the Kenosha Car Show, you were telling me Doc Doc won't let anybody else touch his car. <laughs> yeah, I have to start it. He doesn't want to start it unless I'm around. So I'm I'm always the one that's there to start him. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. Have, so have you ever been behind the wheel of any of these, any of the cars at all? No, no, no interest. Uh, only my '55 Chevy back in the day, but. Uh, I've always been interested in the mechanical engineering aspect of it, uh, even more so with the, the difficulty of burning nitro. So uh, that's been my real interest. Started out way back in the 60s and still is today. I, if I wasn't uh, running nostalgia cars now, I, I wouldn't be involved. I, uh, I worked for a while for NHRA in the late 70s and early 80s. Uh, but, uh, yeah, I don't really have any interest of even going to a drag race anymore unless I'm burning nitro. Now, where, where do you get your nitro methane from? Well, either Doc is a dealer and uh, then uh, also uh, Don Schumacher. Those are the two best places for the best price. Mm. Uh, what other events do you have coming up with uh, Biles Young? Well, we got Cedar Falls this weekend, and then uh, then we've got uh, a week off, and then we've got Cordova again on Saturday night, and uh, then I I go over to uh, Norwalk, Ohio, the first week in August for the uh, Pontiac Nationals with the Boss Bird, and then Baz uh, he's got some corporate stuff to do. He's he's going to be traveling out of the country uh, during a lot of August. Uh, I'm going to do the uh, World Series of Drag Racing with Doc, and we may get booked in there also with Baz and, and with Bronchi. They were talking to us Saturday night, and the, the whole program for the World Series isn't all sold up yet, so we may get back in there. Uh, then we got Baz. We're going to run, uh, of course, Union Grove, Baz and Doc, uh, Labor Day weekend, 
And the weekend after that in September, Baz is going to go to uh, Martin, Michigan. And uh, then after that, we've got nothing set for sure. I don't know if we'll go back to Bowling Green, Kentucky for the good guys. We raced for them last year down there. And Baz still hasn't made up his mind if he wants to go to uh, Bakersfield again this year in California in October. Um, but we'll see. We'll see in probably in another month. A lot of it depends. He's so busy with uh, with Snap-on, and he travels quite a bit. So it kind of is hard with traveling for drag racing and traveling for work. But we, we get him in there. And uh, don't forget to tell everybody about your car show up in Lannan, Wisconsin. Oh, yeah, that's, that's turned out to be quite a thing. Uh, we started it in uh, 2005 as part of our 75th anniversary, and uh, I was chairman of the 75th committee, and so when we were trying to decide what to have for activities, Lannan has always been a, quite a strong car, car, car town. We would maybe street race once in a while. Not sure, but uh, anyways, a lot of hot rods and street rods, and so we thought, well, maybe it'd be good to have a car show. But we started a car show in 2005, and we had, no, I don't think we had 50 cars, but now it's grown to be quite a thing, and uh, we got hurt a little bit with rain last year, but uh, we had over 600 cars the year before, which I think is quite a statement for the area. And then in the last few years, I've been bringing in the nitro cars, and we were fortunate last year we had four of them there. We start them twice a day. We start them at, at 11 and 1. And, uh, of course, it gives people a chance to get close up to them and stand right next to them when they're running. Of course, a lot of them don't stay around. But uh, it's it's turned out to be a real nice thing and a real good big event for, for the village. I'm quite pleased with it. So you get Doc, Doc Holliday, I know, is one of them, and uh, Bob's too? Oh, yeah, Baz will be there, and, and so will uh, Anthony Brunchy with the Iowa Punisher. And then last year we had the uh, Tom Hoover uh, Nostalgia 1966 Top Fuel Dragster, which is also one of them that I did the engine combination for. And I uh, have been at quite a few cackle fests, including out in Bakersfield, California, and Bowling Green, Kentucky at the Hot Rod Reunion. And so Steve was kind enough to bring his car down. So, yeah, we had four nitro cars there. I don't know of any other car shows, at least in Wisconsin, that have even one. So we had four. It was pretty impressive. Oh. Uh, we'll do it again this year with three. It's July 30th, last Sunday in July always, in the morning till 3 in the afternoon. The uh, Lions Club puts on a pancake breakfast, so you can come there for breakfast and get the smell some nitro. Yeah, there's nothing like the smell of nitromethane in the morning. Yeah, any time is good. Good, it clears up your sinuses. Oh yeah, sure. And if if you put a lid in your mouth, it takes care of bad breath too. <laughs> so 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 all the all the tracks that you go to with uh, Baz and uh, Doc, what do you, what's your favorite track to see the cars run on? Well, I normally don't watch any cars run other than my own. Uh, I'm not a good spectator, but uh, of course, the nicest drag strip in the United States is Norwalk, Ohio. Uh, that thing is beautiful and well done, and always first class. So, I, I like that place a lot. But I'm I'm a grassroots racer, as it says. I like Eddyville, Iowa, and those kind of places. Uh, Dayton, Ohio, Kilcare Raceway, uh, where you got the you know, the local folks, and you get about two, 3,000 people out there for a one-night event, and they're all uh, all interested, and good people, and we sell a lot of souvenirs, and that also helps the business. Right. Yeah. Now, as far as, like, Great Lakes Dragway, is that one of your favorite tracks to go to, do? Well, yeah, it is, because it's only 50 miles from my house, and like I say, I've been going there when I first went there in 1958, so it, it's certainly home. Um, and yeah, they uh, they pay us good, and it's always a nice event. Plus, you get to see a lot of old timers from years past. Yeah. What do you, What do you think about Route 66? Well, again, it's it's you know it's a beautiful facility, but um, it, it's. Corporate America, 
you know, it doesn't, uh, we, we don't run there. They don't map, book us in for match races or anything. So it's just another drag strip to me. Yeah, so one one driver told me before that uh, as much money as they put in there, they don't have no showers for the drivers. Like uh, Union Grove does have a shower for the drivers. <laughs> yeah, well, that's not too big a deal. As most of the professional guys are in three hundred thousand dollar motorhomes, they got their own showers. So. Yeah, true. So the, the car show in uh, Kenosha, that one you guys been at the last two years now, right? Yeah, that's yeah, that's a charity event. And, uh, yeah, last two years we've been there, and same thing again. We started up and and uh, got the people to get nitromethane all up close. Uh, we, normally, uh, we normally hit the throttle two or three times, and that makes quite a few people jump, especially the new ones. Uh, so, yeah, it, it was a good time. And... Uh, we we enjoy it. It helps out, raises some money for charity, teach a little more people about burning nitro. Now, besides uh, working with nitro methane, uh, funny cars. You, will you have any other hobbies outside of this? No, no. My my other life has been in construction. I've been involved in construction over fifty years, and ended up designing and building hospitals and buildings around the world. I've lived in twenty seven places. And so uh, between uh, construction and drag racing, there don't be much time for anything else, that's for sure. Now, Jerry, if you can go back time and uh, change anything, would you do anything? As far as what? Uh, like an HRE Big Show? or Yeah, drag racing. Well, I, I think it's what it's always been the plague, particularly in nitro racing. Of course, it's getting everywhere, but, you know, the cost to operate, uh, you know, on a weekly schedule, it, it's overwhelming. You've got to have some good sponsorships and and uh, some deep pockets, and it's made it very tough. When uh, back in the 80s, when we were running the big show, we did it with three crew members. You know, now most of them got eight to ten, and so just the cost of being on the road with hotels and travel, and a lot of those people are fly-ins, and uh, it, it's just gotten so horribly expensive. Um, I just, I wish we could do something, but you, you know, the genie's out of the bottle, as they say, and you can't stuff it back in. I absolutely hate thousand foot racing. I think that's just a joke. Uh, we should be quarter mile, but oh well. Uh, but yeah, they definitely, uh, you know, pro stock is about dead because they've, uh, took that thing so much money to run a pro stock. That's, that's about gone. So that's one of the advantages of Pro Mod. After you build the car, they're still fairly dependable engine combinations, particularly the blown alcohol. There's a lot of known technology there. You can put one of those things together and run it every weekend. So, uh, yeah, the only thing I would do is, is take away, well, the constant growth or speed. We finally, you know, when we went over 300 miles an hour, the technology kind of surpassed the racing facilities we had, and uh, they don't build them any longer to stop them. And then the second issue is we've got a real could be problem with the tires because uh, they're not designed to go over 340. And with the cars going over 330 now, we have some some concerns about something bad happening. But yeah, I would I would do much like NASCAR. And as soon as the cars go faster, take something away from them. So, you know, NASCAR works real hard to stay at under 200 miles an hour, right around 200 miles an hour. I really think drag racing should have done the same thing to be just over 300 miles an hour. So you can use it for advertising. Cars go 300 miles an hour, but you can't tell the difference in the grandstand from 320 to 330. And plus, they go past you so fast now I don't think you can enjoy the two cars racing side by side. Back when we had the quarter mile and we were running, you know, in the low, uh, high fours, low fives, you could watch the two cars maybe go back and forth a couple of times during the run. But now, because it's so short, it pretty much all depends on reaction time because if you're late, you're not going to have a chance of catching a guy by the lights when it was a quarter mile because 1,000 foot, it's all over. So 
Yeah, I would I would for sure right away slow them up to 300 miles an hour and go back to a quarter mile. That would be my dream, but I don't see that happening. So what do you think about the nitrous oxide cars? Uh, nothing. Don't mean anything to me. You can go see the same thing at a dentist's office, you know. I, uh, again, go back to my other original statement, so nitro or nothing for me. So any anything you can drive to the convenience store uh, doesn't impress me too much. Hmm. Now, did, did you say at the beginning of you worked with jet cars before? No, never involved with jet cars. No, no. Oh. Uh, a little bit, little bit uh, hanging around with Pete Barnesworth when they built the uh, X1 uh, hydrogen peroxide rocket car and a series of those, so I know some of that. Uh, the Blue Flame, which of course held the land speed record for many years, was built in Butler, Wisconsin, and by a whole bunch of old drag racers. And uh, Del Fisher, the guy that drove when I got started, he uh, had a machine shop, and he machined most of all the parts, machine parts for the Blue Flame. So it's it's got a lot of history right here in in uh, Milwaukee area. Now, have you ever done any work with uh, Chow Star uh, Dragster one day before he passed away? No, no. I was uh, back in the '60s, of course. Uh, was friends with Charlie, and and we ran uh, a lot of UPRA races together. Uh, and, uh, yeah, I've always been friends with him, but never whipped the car itself. That was always Charlie's deal, and it wasn't until uh, Doc bought him out in the uh, early 80s, and then that's when he went and then later came back with the uh, nostalgia dragster. Right. Now, the one thing that's always good about drag racing is the people can get in the pits and see the cars and watch them warm up and talk to the drivers. Not like NASCAR where you can't even get in there. Right. No, that, that's a big thing. And, and at some of these smaller races, uh, like Eddyville and, and that kind of stuff, we'll, after the race is over at night, we'll, uh, you know, put kids in the car and let the parents take pictures of them sitting in the car by the car. And I think that really helps, you know, bring the fans closer to the racing. Um, so, yeah, I agree. Plus, it's good for souvenir sales. You know, that, that helps defer the expenses. So what what's the biggest event that you guys go to? The biggest? Oh, I don't know. I, the most amount of cars would be the uh, the uh, California Hot Rod Reunion in Bakersfield, California in October. That has, well, it normally has, can't have as many as 40 cars, but normally over 30 Nitro Funny cars uh, trying for 16 spots, and they're all... All pretty darn good cars. So, uh, yeah, we uh, last year we qualified number 11th out there, which I was real pleased with, with that many quality cars. Uh, but it's also, it's a very, very good drag strip. They, it's very well prepared, it's concrete, and it's fantastic traction. So you got to really hop them up just like a big show to, uh, to get in there. But other than that, uh, actually, I prefer two-car, four-car match races. That's that's what I've been involved in most of my life, and that's what I enjoy. Um, some small drag strip on a Saturday night with four cars. That, that's me. Yeah. So when when US thirty was around, what did you think of US thirty drag strip? Well, it was it was a good deal. Of course, it was pretty nasty drag strip, but it was a nice deal again for making money because. They ran, uh, you know, on, on Friday night, they had a special deal, and you'd make one run and come back for the second one, but you could pick up some money, especially if you were on the way to drag races on Saturday and Sunday, uh, particularly match racing. A lot of times we'd run one place Saturday and another place Sunday. So this way, if it was going to the east or the south, we'd go through Chicago, stop at US 30, run Friday night, pick up some easy money, and then go on to, to the next race. So it was a it was an interesting place, you know. There, back in those days, this is in uh, say the seventies. You know, there was still uh, some uh, gun shops in the in the grandstands, and some uh, interesting things went on there. But, uh, back in the good old days, as they say. Yeah, they, they used to get quite a few funny cars over there. Oh yeah, they bought them all in. Yep, just because. You know, it was a good deal. They paid good money for one run and maybe for the second run. And so if you were in the area, yeah, 
And quite a few of the funny cars that ran there also ran for Ben Chris and uh, Ira Litchie. They, they had a, a booking agency, and they booked nitro cars, well, all kinds of cars, jets and, and stuff, but cars all throughout the United States, primarily in the Midwest. So they had, had, they had the Coca-Cola circuit, if you remember that. Yeah. And uh, they did quite a deal on, on promoting uh, in the Midwest besides U.S. 30. So that's why they had quite a few cars always support of them. Yeah, even uh, Great Gray Lakes used to get a lot of cars too when Broadway Bob was running way years ago. Well, same thing. That was in the sixties, yes, and into the seventies, well, middle eighties, I guess, um, when match racing was big. And uh, Bob put on some big events, and, and he wasn't afraid to spend some money. He he would book in the big names, and he would pay the money. And the uh, about uh, Metzler and, and Great Lake is most times you could run there for sure twice, easily 30 times, and maybe even four times a year. So you get that kind of cash flow, that's kind of nice. And so that's why uh, Bob always, uh, people look to him because he would provide them dates. Right. So, Jerry, what, what, what's Jerry Newman's favorite food to eat? Oh my, I don't know about a favorite. Uh, I suppose uh, if I had to pick, well, two, one would be a barbecue ribs, and of course the second one would be pizza. That's mm-hmm. about it. But food's not a big deal for me. I eat too much of it anyways. So when you go to the tracks with like Doc and uh, Bob, you guys do any barbecuing? Yeah, we, we cook all our own food, yeah. Mm-hmm. Sure, because you got to feed the crew members and stuff. And so, uh, yeah, yeah, we always, we have food for the crew. Uh, just about everybody does nowadays. Uh, some degree. Gotta, gotta feed the crew. Gotta keep them working. Yeah, and the barbecue is kind of e- economical to do. Oh, yeah, oh, sure, yeah. Plus, you know, it's better quality food. You're not gonna sit, give them, you know, racetrack hamburgers or whatever. And so, this way, you know, it's cook pork chops and chicken and steak and Doc is famous for his um, grilled shrimp, barbecue shrimp. He's done more than 20,000 of them over the years and uh, all over the, the United States. He's, he's known for that. But uh, yeah, Doc likes to grill. He, he uh, We cook up something every night. Now each, uh, each run takes how many gallons of nitromethane? Well, the, the, the full run from when you started, of course, do the burnout and all that. Most of the fuel is used on the burnout. Uh, we used um, about seven gallons to run, around in there. We, I figure 10 gallons to run, uh, both with the warm-up, uh, that takes a couple gallons, and then the run. So it, what, what we bring with us in the trailers, we always allow for 10 gallons to run. The big guys are up to about 15 gallons now. Now, what, what's the difference between the, the nostalgia of funny cars and the, like, modern funny cars, like, you know, like John Force on them? Well, the, the basic rollers are the same. The rolling chassis, of course, the bodies are nostalgic, but uh, the, if you just take the, the chassis and the car. Um, but we, uh, we have a lot more rule. Uh, they can run two 44-amp mag- magnetos. We can run one 10-amp. Uh, they can run a 1471 blower. We're restricted to a 671. They can run 50, uh, 50% overdrive. We run a maximum of 18. We make a little over 30 pounds to boost, maybe 32, 35. They'll make as much as 60 now. Um, we're restricted to a 21 gallon fuel pump. They're right now running fuel pumps that are about 110 gallons. Uh, we have to have a transmission. Uh, they can't have, uh, we have to have uh, nothing lower than a 390 gear. They run 320s. Uh, we have to have a three-disc clutch. Of course, the big cars now run either five or six. Uh, we can't have any clutch management or any um, fuel system management and, uh, and no timing management. Now, in the big show, everything is controlled electronically. That's why they all run almost the same ET all the time now because there's 
with the computer software programs they have now and with the controlling of the magneto, the, the fuel and the clutch, uh, all electronically. Years ago, we did it with air and stuff, but that was a little bit inconsistent. Now, electronically, it's very accurate. And so, uh, it, in a way, it's become easier to run the big show cars because there's not much you can do to them. Uh, they change compression ratio a little bit. They change nitro, or, uh, yeah, a little bit of nitro percentage, not much. Uh, but there's not real many things you can do to them anymore. They, they're running them maxed out according to the rules, and so that's why everybody's kind of running the same these days, because they are all the same. All the originality in, in nitro burning from years past, that, that's all gone. It still exists to some degree in the nostalgia cars, because the people run many different size engines and all different kinds of compression ratios and uh, different gear combinations and different tire things, but in NHRA Big Show, that's all. You only have one choice, and so you're fairly well restricted there. Mm-hmm. And, of course, there, the uh, the cost of operating is just out of sight. Right. It costs, it costs us a little over, well, depends, but they say between 2000 and $2,500 to make a run, and they're up over $11,000 now. And so you've got to have big wallet or a lot of sponsors to spend that kind of money. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, I prefer watching nostalgia. Yeah, I uh, I've been really impressed lately with uh, well, what we call the Tom Moultrie combination. Tom uh, developed it uh, with his fuel altered over the years, and it's it's in between a big show tune up and and a nostalgia tune up. And they make great big flames, and they make the same sound as the big show, but they're a lot more economical to run. So we can uh, use them for match racing. And uh, it's been it's been slowly growing, but in the last five years, there's few more people now have built those kind of cars. And uh, that's where I kind of see match racing going in the Midwest, towards more towards fuel alters or nostalgia funny cars like we've got those kind of bodies, but with this Tom Moultrie combination of a bigger pump and a bigger blower and a 44 amp magneto. And uh, they do have a sound, and they do make, make a sight with the flames. So I, I see that as what our future is going to be here for nitro match racing, it's particularly in the Midwest. Yeah, yeah I like the Jurassic Plastic. Uh, yep. Yeah. I've, I've, I've had a time on my show twice already. I had Buddy Hall on twice, and uh, I haven't got Tim on yet, though. Tim calling, and he's trying to get him on. I know he was up at Great Lakes at Memorial Day with his uh, red dragster. Yeah, with his front engine car, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we were, yeah, we were with him last week down in, uh, in Eddyville, Iowa. So, uh, yeah, and Tom will be, they'll be at Union Grove this year. He hasn't been at Union Grove in... Many, many, many right, years, but he's going to, going to be there Labor Day weekend. Yeah, I was talking about that with him, how he's been a long time. And, uh, yeah. 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 So. Should be a good event, Labor Day weekend. Yeah, I think so. It normally is. You know, it's a good time of year. It's normally not as hot as the Memorial Day. And so, uh, and you still always got the chance to rain any time in the Midwest, but... We've done pretty well there. We like we like Union Grove a lot. Labor Day weekend is a good place to be. Yeah, as long as you don't get a lot of dew on the car. Yeah, Union Grove quite as bad. Um, they've been working real hard, uh, Marcel, especially to, to run us before 9:30 at night, and uh, that that makes a big difference. Plus, the the cornfields don't put up quite the moisture like the river does, but. Uh, yeah, it, Union Grove can get slippery sometimes, too. Uh, it just depends on the time of night. But uh, during the day and early evenings, you know, it's great. Not a problem. Yeah. Well, Jerry, I wanted what? to... Wanted, well, go ahead. What were you saying? No, I didn't say anything. I was saying, well, Jerry, it's been great having you on the show tonight. I want to thank you for coming on. Well, thanks for having me. We can do it again sometime. And uh, we'll pr- most likely me and the wife will see Atlanta, Wisconsin for the car show. Oh, that'd be great. Okay, look forward to it. Got to come so, up. Uh, Got to come up here. Some cackling. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Eleven and one. Yep. 
and then we served some food for the crew and the guys uh, in between. So we got a lot of good food. So uh, my wife uh, enjoys cooking, so we normally have about four entrees there. So uh, yeah, come on down. We'd love to have you. Yeah, boy. I know. The, I know the wife wants to smell some nitromethane. Right, Tanya? Yeah. All right. Well, yeah. she can she can stand right next to me, you are right under the body, and we'll give her the full amount. Yeah, and I'll be choking to death. She'll be choking to death. <laughs> okay, but but you'll enjoy it. Yeah, I do enjoy it. Yeah, it smells there better you go. than my fucking. It smells better than my fucking muffler. <laughs> 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 well, Jerry, well, you have a good night. You too. When we'll see you at the car show. Okay. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye.